As you can see, I've hooked up a Roly Seaboard Rise 49, a 49 key wave, they call it. Instead of a key, they call it a key wave. And I'm using this as a keyboard extension to the Hawken Continuum. So I'm not really interested right now in using the Roly with its equator software and trying to run uh, the Roly as its own instrument. I want to be able to use the Continuum and the Egan Matrix and the internal sound set of the Continuum as my sound source. And in addition to the Continuum fingerboard, I'm going to have the addition of being able to have the adjunct of using the Roly uh, keyboard as well to do certain things. Now, f first off, you can see that the mapping of the size of the key waves on the Roly to the size of the continuum fingerboard is almost one for one. Uh, over a span of time it gets a little off, but for the most part it's a one-to-one -one mapping, especially on the half unit that I have here, and it just turns out with the 49 key uh, version of the Roly, I pretty much can map every uh, note on the continuum to a Roly key wave except for maybe this top one here, but even then I can kind of scroll up on this one from the C to the C sharp, which I have on my uh, continuum on the Roly. I can, even though there's not a technical key wave there, I can still get to that little uh, note that will map correctly. Now let's look at how I set this thing up. After the Roly is connected into your system through USB, you should be able to go into the Continuum's MIDI and Global Settings and in the External Control Settings, see your RISE 49 ready to connect there. So that's all set up here. The next thing I wanted to do is go in and set the Y and Z to MPE mode, which the uh, Roly seems to deal with fine. The only issue here is the Roly uses default control channel on one. You can't change it as opposed to the continuums using uh, channels 15 and 16. That doesn't seem to matter for what we're doing here, but it could affect some other things that you want to do. Now, once that's set up, I have my bend set at the uh, maximum 96 in the continuum. And what I did here was just take about the simplest program you, you can do, just a simple sine wave program. And I did one extra thing. I added a formula that will change the waveform from its default sine wave going up to the, that sawtooth and beyond even uh, through Y, and you'll see why I did, did this in a second. Now, on the Roly end, let's go in there and, um, oh, and one more thing is here, you can probably set this up to dynamic velocity, it'll work fine. Um, and on the Roly end, they have a dashboard utility that lets you set the configurations of your five parameters, your strike component hitting the key wave, the glide, basically the X direction in continuum uh, world, the, the slide, which is your Y going on your Y component on the Roly, uh, press is your Z function, and then they also give you on the Roly a way to modify the uh, setting for the lift. You're basically taking your finger off the key. And these things can be adjusted with these little sliders. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that I can get a uh, an exponential uh, curve to this press. And what that tends to do is 
make a lot of the rolly sounds have a stronger attack than I would see on the keyboard, uh, or excuse me, on the fingerboard. So uh, it can be a little bit difficult mapping the rolly to the continuum in terms of exact uh, dynamic uh, expression uh, when you're pressing down. But other than that, there's a lot of uh, similarity here, and the rolly seems to work really well in, in a lot of ways. Now, on the rolly end, what we need to do is we'll set it to uh, multi-operation in MP3 mode, and what I want to do is uh, set my uh, range of channel use from 2. It'll default to 2 here uh, because 1 is reserved, as we said, for the control channel. So I could set it to something else. I'll set this from 2 to 13, which is ab about the range of values that the uh, the continuum is using when I check its uh, Egan matrix um, pressure gauges. I don't want to set it all the way up to 16 because uh, I don't want to interfere with control channel information from the rolly. Um, and that seems to be okay. If I want, I can go and I can fiddle with some of the uh, curves for the five components of the, the Rolly that, uh, again, map to X, Y, and Z for the most part on the continuum. You also can set some uh, ancillary uh, uh, slider functions on the Rolly to control some CCs, but I'm not doing that here. I also want to set the uh, pitch bend range to the max of 96 so that when I'm uh, doing my portamentos on the continuum they'll map one for one on the rolly. Okay, and that should be all we need to do to get things into motion and now let me bring back up the continuum uh, editor and I'll throw that into its reduced view so that we can see the pressure going on on both of them at the same time. So on the continuum, you'll notice when I have this up, I'm using Y to change the waveform from that sine component through to sawtooth and back. And on the continuum, there's no problem doing that since it's a flat surface I can play anywhere, and it's perfectly fine for me to play in the sine area with both the, you know, corresponding white and black keys on the piano, if you want to think that way. But on the rolly, um, you can hear that I can get more attacks going on there. But if I'm careful, I can I can get a nice legato going. But and the rolly will respond to the Y. But the problem of course is when I play in the black keys, I'm already into the you know, into the sawtooth-like sound, and on the white keys, relatively speaking, I'm more on the triangle and sine-like sound. So that's one of the problems that I have to deal with here in terms of why, uh, which is no problem on the fingerboard because you can move your hand to wherever you need to be. On the keyboard, that why motion is going to create some some issues if there's a great change in why. It'd be nice if they could let you just change Y, you know, for half of it, uh, on and starting at zero on, you know, both the black and the white uh, key components. So, uh, other than that, um, the slides I don't have to play on the the key guides if I don't want to. I can actually play on the ribbon area. and be kind of <laughs> like the continuum. Uh, I can get to about the place where I am over here.
the 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 slide is not quite as smooth as it is on the continuum, but it's good enough. Um, and when things are set correctly, um, you you can uh, you can use them together. I think quite quite well, especially when uh, you can do things on the rolly. You know, more like a regular piano. Though, be careful if you buy one of these. It, you, if you're a pianist, you just aren't going to take to it like a duck to water. It needs to be learned like almost a new instrument, like the like the fingerboard, because um, there are raised surfaces and valleys in between which you can still use to slide and glide around and and do things and. It's uh, the feel of it is not like keys. Um, feels like a gel pad almost uh, with the silicon coating. Very unique feel. But um, I'm quite happy now with it because I think it's going to be uh, a suitable keyboard extension that's better than uh, just a standard MIDI keyboard because it it does support MPE and it can do all these nice things that a standard MIDI keyboard can't.